Hi, Denise Gwen, reading aloud for you for my short story, S&H Green Stamps. The healthcare industry is in decline at a time when the need for skilled nursing care has reached an apex. I fear for any soul who has to enter a hospital and upon discharge is left wondering who on earth will take care of him. Brett Everett McGill, MD, Surgeon General, at the American Medical Association Annual Meeting Keynote Address, August 31st, 2099. Chapter 1. He opened his eyes to the sound of scratching, a dry, sharp noise that reminded him of the time his best friend dragged his nails down the chalkboard in fifth grade math and got detention for it. A doctor stood over his bed, his neck bent, his attention focused on the chart in his hands. He kept writing. Ben stirred in his bed and coughed. Oh, so you're awake. What's going on? Ben blinked, his eyes filled with clouds of sleep. He'd not seen this doctor before. The doctor did not look at him. Well, I'm sorry to say, but you're being discharged. Discharged? Yep, we've done all we can for you here, and it's time for rehab. Rehab? You're no longer sick enough to stay in the hospital. You can rehabilitate at this center on the outskirts of town. You'll get the best of care. He scratched out one more note and slammed the chart shut with the heavy thunk of a casket lid. You're re you'll recover fully there. Where is it again? How soon am I going? You take care now. The doctor dropped the chart. It fell, yanked short of the floor by a silver chain. How soon? And the words died in his throat as a group of white-coated orderlies marched into the room, pushing a gurney. They aligned the gurney alongside his hospital bed. Two men went to the far side of the bed. They grabbed a hold of the sheet under his body and nodded at the two on the near side of his bed, who stretched over the gurney and grabbed the same sheet. One man started the count. One, two, three. They slid him off the hospital bed and onto the gurney. They disconnected the ports connecting him to the heart monitor, the IVs, the blood pressure monitor. One orderly transferred the bag of saline to a hook on a rod on the new bed and affixed a backup bag of saline. Another orderly hooked up a small heart monitor machine to the empty port and tucked it into the bedclothes. In two seconds, they disconnected him from everything tying him to the hospital. Someone dropped a warmed blanket over him. Someone else wrapped a blood pressure cuff around his left bicep. It tightened. The cuff inflated with air, held it for a second, then the pressure released and the cuff deflated. His systolic and diastolic numbers flashed on a screen. Blood pressure's good, an orderly said. Let's rock and roll. They booked, the gurney, they booked the gurney out of the room and down a corridor into an elevator. Nobody spoke as the elevator plummeted seven floors to the basement. When the elevator doors opened, they pushed him out and down yet another corridor. He lowered his head onto the thin pillow and read the signs above the doorways as they rushed past. X-ray. Mammogram. Outpatient surgery morgue. They wheeled him out a door and down a ramp toward a waiting ambulance, parked up against the loading dock and with the back doors flung open. A second ambulance arrived and emitted a screeching beep, 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 as it backed up to park next to the first ambulance. As the second ambulance stopped, the doors flung open from within and two orderlies hoisted a gurney with a white shrouded body on it out of the ambulance and up the ramp. Hey, an orderly called out. How's it going? The orderly pushing Ben's gurney said. Another day, another dead body. Yep, that it is. 
The two orderlies pushed the body through the double doors, and as they swung shut, Ben heard one call out, Hey, I got another stiff one for you. And the door swung shut behind him, and he heard no more. The orderlies pushed his gurney up and into the ambulance, secured the gurney with clamps set into a metal panel on the floor, wrapped a safety harness around both him and the gurney, then locked it. Two of the orderlies jumped out of the ambulance and the two remaining settled into the jump seats and belted themselves in. Someone from outside slammed the ambulance door shut and thumped on the window. The ambulance pulled out of the parking lot and drove away. The driver did not turn on the siren.